People usually think of early spring as a great time for chickens, and it is. You know, they're starting to lay again. There's baby chicks being born. It really is a time of rebirth, but it's also a very dangerous time for chickens, and I want to warn you about it. Hello, friends. Welcome to Chickenlandia. My name is Dahlia. I'm a backyard chicken educator, also known as the president of Chickenlandia. Raising chickens has been the best way for me to find peace and joy in my life, and I want to help you find that too. This little baby is cranky. She's not a baby because I'm not getting babies this year, but I did get some more chickens. <laughs> I'm going to go put you away. At one point during the last few years, I really experienced a shift in the way I taught about chicken keeping. When I first started teaching, which was about 12 years ago, it was just different. Like the way I taught was different. I was basically repeating what I had read in a lot of the expert chicken books, which was not bad information. I was not saying anything that was wrong. I was not saying anything that is not good for chickens. But it was really a very westernized way of thinking about chicken keeping. And because of that, I really feel like I kind of led people to believe that you needed a lot of money to get started with chickens and to keep chickens, which is absolutely not true. You can certainly spend a lot of money on your chickens. I do, I actually spend a lot of money on my chickens, but I don't want people to think that you actually have to have a lot of money to keep chickens. And I'm telling you all this because today we're going to be talking about some things that clearly will cost money. But towards the end of the video, I wanna give some more budget-friendly options. So if you're someone that is like, look, I can't afford what you're talking about, just hang in there. I will give you some options at the end of the video. Most animals that are chicken predators are either crepuscular, crepuscular, crepuscular. <laughs> That means that they hunt in the twilight hours or at dawn when the sun is like not completely up and the sun hasn't completely gone down. And then of course there's also plenty of nocturnal predators that will go after your chickens. And some of them are both. They, they will hunt in the twilight and the dawn hours and they will also hunt during the night. Because of this, if you have a predator proof coop that you lock up at dusk and you open up at dawn, that is like half the battle because you are eliminating the risk of so many predators that are hunting during that time because your chickens are in a safe coop. But there is a problem that happens in the springtime that a lot of people don't consider. During the springtime, a lot of animals that are not normally a threat during the day will actually come out during the day because they have babies that they need to feed and also because a lot of them are desperate for food after a long winter where they didn't have a lot to eat. Now this can also happen in the fall, it can also happen in the winter, but most predominantly it's going to happen in the springtime and that's because that's when these animals have babies. As we go through these things that are gonna help you keep predators out of your chicken yard, I do wanna acknowledge that I know there's a lot of people out there that will say, you know what, I, if there's a predator that comes into my yard, I'm just gonna shoot it and get rid of it. And I do, <laughs> I'm gonna be really honest with you, I confess, I'm like a total bleeding heart. I love all animals. I don't wanna see animals get shot, but that is not why I'm about to say what I'm about to say. I really think it is a bad idea to either shoot all the predators that come around your chicken yard or trap them and re-release them somewhere else. And the reason for that is rodents. Almost all the predators that are gonna be going after your chickens also eat rodents. So just having the presence of them around your chicken yard in your local ecosystem is going to help to balance that system. You know, rodents are everywhere. Rats, they are everywhere. They're literally everywhere. There's no way that you're gonna get away from them. You know, wherever there's people, there are rodents. What I want you to think of is maintaining balance. So if there is a predator presence around your chicken yard, that rodent population is going to stay in a balanced state. You will have less of a likelihood to have an infestation. And when an infestation happens, it is so hard to get ahead of that without professional help. 
So this goes without saying, uh, I think it's pretty obvious if you really, you know, if you want to free range, which I'm not against, I'm not against free ranging, but if you want to do that, a great way to protect your flock is to get yourself a guardian dog. Like they are gonna be worth their weight in gold. Guardian dogs are amazing. My dogs, they're not guardian dogs. <laughs> <laughs> they are chicken killers, okay? So I have to keep them separate. You know, and then if you live out in the country, there are other animals that you could get that would really help with predator proofing, like a donkey or llamas. Geese will be a level of protection. But I know a lot of you that are watching me, you don't live out in the country, you live in the city. And if you don't have an animal that is gonna protect your chickens, really having them in an enclosed run is the only way to ensure that you're not gonna end up with a predator attack. And sometimes they even outsmart you if you have a run. So we just do the best we can. If you really want your chickens to be as protected as possible, especially from aerial predators, you are going to have to get some good, strong netting for your chicken run. You will see here, I have really strong industrial strength netting. It is not cheap. I'm gonna tell you here in a minute an option that you can that you can try and find depending on where you live. But this is so strong that it is also going to help to keep raccoons and other animals that might come during the day, that might climb over the fencing during the day, it will help to deter them. Could a raccoon get through this if they had all night long to do it? Yes, but my chickens are in a predator-proof coop all night long. During the daytime, a nocturnal animal is going to feel pretty vulnerable if they're out during the day because that's not their normal habit. So I don't think that they're gonna sit there and work on this netting to try and get into my chicken yard during the day. At night, yes. Another thing that you may want to consider because it is really going to help you deal with digging predators, you know, skunks can dig, uh, raccoons can dig, and then of course domestic dogs can dig. For those types of predators, I really recommend either burying hardwire mesh all along the perimeter of your fencing or skirting it around your fencing. So let me show you what that looks like. If you bury the mesh, I recommend doing it at least, you know, burying it at least a foot down. And if you skirt the mesh, I would try and skirt it at least a foot out. So what happens when you do that is a predator will come to the bottom of the fencing. You know, naturally that's where they're gonna come. They try to dig and they can't get through. And it's the same as, you know, whether it's buried or whether it's skirted, they just, it kind of uh, bamboozles them <laughs> and they feel like they can't get through. And so they'll give up, which is what you want. You want them to just decide, well, you know, this isn't worth it, but they will still be in the area deterring rodents. So if you want to predator proof, but you don't have a big budget in which to do so, I don't want you to get discouraged. The main thing that I want you to remember is you are giving these chickens a better life than they would ever have in a factory farm. And that is always a goal. We look at the value of the life that we're giving to our chickens and we make sure that they can peck and scratch, that they can see the sky above them, that they can feel the fresh air. And that is huge. And if that is all you can do, then really from, from my heart of hearts, I think that's okay. All that being said, if you really want to predator-proof as much as possible on a limited budget, then it's going to take a lot of forward thinking on your part. You're really gonna have to do some planning and start getting supplies as soon as you can. One thing I think is great is that right now in our, in our modern world, we can go online and there's so many online classifieds, places that we can go to find either free materials, you can find used dog runs, which are great to keep chickens secure. You can find used wild Wiring. You can find hardware mesh. I've actually like given away tons of hardware mesh for free and I have seen it available for free before. There are just so many supplies that you can get if you have the time to hunt for them, if you put in that time to hunt for them. I really think that you can keep your chickens secure. It just takes a while to find the supplies. If you cannot afford hardware mesh and you can't find it used anywhere, at the very least, find yourself some chicken wire, which is much 
much cheaper than hardware mesh and double it up. And I know a lot of people are like, even doubled up chicken wire isn't great. Well, it's not hardware mesh. Like it's just not as good, but it is at least a little more of protection than just the flimsy chicken wire on its own, like one layer of it. The more that you can layer it, the more likely a predator is to get frustrated with it and walk away. For the netting, you know, I talked about how expensive my netting is, and it really is. But one thing that I have done in the past is I have gone to the marina in my town and I have grabbed a whole bunch of used fishing netting. And the fishermen know that people like to use this netting for things. So they just leave it next to the dumpster at the marina and people go there and they grab it. And a lot of chicken people will go there and grab this used fishing netting to cover their runs with it. And this stuff is strong. <laughs> you know, sometimes it'll have, it'll need a little bit of repairs, but it's worth it because it is really strong stuff. It's probably even stronger than this, okay? So that is one option for you if you live in an area where there's a marina. Motion sensor lights is another option. I even have a friend that uses those, you know, those like animatronic uh, things that you can buy during Halloween or during Christmas. And they turn on when somebody walks by them. They actually buy those and they put them around the perimeter of their chicken yard so that when predators come, the little witch or the little ghost starts dancing <laughs> and it scares them away, which I think is a brilliant idea. And that's the point. You really wanna just get creative and create as many layers as possible to frustrate predators, to encourage them to think to themselves, you know what, it's just not worth it, okay? And that can be like just putting a whole bunch of rocks in a vulnerable spot or like burying plywood into the ground to discourage digging predators. Just think very creatively and above all, remember that your chickens are lucky and you're doing a really good thing by keeping them. If you have an emergency situation, maybe you've just dealt with a predator attack, or maybe you know that there are predators around, there is a hack that you can do temporarily to keep those predators away and buy yourself some time so that you can properly predator-proof your yard. I have a video about it. It tells you everything that you need to do. It is on the screen right now. And guess what? It's 100% friendly. Backyard chickens, education and entertainment. And I know you're gonna love it. Now I'm gonna get out of the rain. <laughs>